What is up, folks? Briston Gaming here. We are back with How to Build a Base in 7 Days to Die Part 2. This week is all about upgrading the base, expanding a little bit to give ourselves some more room, and then adding some traps. But before we jump into anything, I want to take a second to say thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. Now, we're going to go ahead and jump into the minimum material requirements you're going to, you're going to need for this week. So you're going to need 400 wood to make wood frame blocks. Now, you can forego this and use cobblestone blocks. I don't like to do that. I like to use the wood frame in case I misplace something it's easy to pick up as opposed to destroying a block. You're also going to need 1600 wood for upgrades and another 400 wood to craft bars, doors, ladders, and hatches. You're also going to need 2000 cobblestone for upgrades, 200 cobblestone for repairs on Horde Knight, and then 300, so, um, 300 concrete mix, I'm sorry, for upgrades, you're also going to need about a thousand iron. Now, with all of these, I like to have extra in case I need it. It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. You're also going to need trip wires, electric fence posts, and a battery storage compartment or battery storage bank. Now, you can find all of these from the traders. I bought this from a trader, uh, it was fairly cheap, and then I found some of these and bought them as well. All the batteries I managed to get from cars. You can also find a wire tool for loot. I found a bunch of them. I also got a robotic sledge as a request reward, and I bought one from a trader for like 700 dukes or something like that. It was really easy. And it's easy to get these dukes if you follow the tip that I made last time about creating your um, robotic turret ammo. Now, the reason why we have two robotic sledges is in case one breaks, another one will be there to take over and continue to help us out. So until you can unlock the, the final tier of the um, robot master and you're going to have two down at once, these are always good. If you find multiples, you can just set them out and then they'll assist you. So here's the frame blocks we're going to put down. Here's the wood. Of course, you see the cobblestone. Here's the iron and here's the concrete mix. And these are the bars that I was talking about. So you're going to need a bunch of bars around 120, 25. Um, we probably won't use all of them, but it's always better to have more in case you need them. And then some uh, ladders, doors, and a hatch. Now there's an alternate path to this. If you don't like getting as much wood so you don't want to get all the extra wood you just want the, the the minimum 1600 for the upgrades of the frames you can do iron bars iron door and an iron hatch and then you'll need about 200 maybe a little bit less uh forged iron for upgrades so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna gather up all this stuff and we're gonna get to upgrading the base so as you see here i've already dug this out a little bit what we're going to do is we're going to replace or place these frames. I say replace. We're going to place frames like this all the way out. And then as we place them down, oops, I meant to go ahead and upgrade this one. So there we go. So we're going to go ahead and place that. Pick. Oh, wait, no. I'm dumb. <laughs> Ignore me, folks. So we're going to upgrade these bottom ones as we place them. We're going to upgrade them all the way up to concrete just because they're going to be load bearing. So we want to make sure that they've got plenty of, uh, I don't know, is tensile strength the right word? Is that the one I'm thinking of? But that's what we want to have. We want to make sure they're going to be able to support the weight. And then from here, what we're going to do is once we get this upgraded, we're going to take and we're going to walk across this way and we're going to enclose this area. So we're going to go ahead and place some frames here, like this, and we're going to walk them across. And then we're going to take, just like this, and we're going to walk them across. Now you can put these, these however you want them. I like having them like this because what we're going to do is we're going to take these wooden doors here and we're going to create a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, airlock. We're going to create an airlock just like that. So whenever you're here, you open one door, you go through, you close the door, close the door, you're good to go. So it makes it really easy and it keeps the zombies out as well. Once we upgrade these, there's going to be more HP between us if the zombies come this way than if they walk this way and come up the ramp here. And that's what we want to focus on. We want to make sure that any pathway the zombies have to take is going to be limited to this right here because this is going to be the lowest HP area. 
So we're going to go ahead and we're going to place these blocks here. Hey, come on. Get there we go. Place the blocks there like that. We can go ahead and upgrade this one. And the reason why we're going to expand out a little bit is because we want to be able to take and have a little bit more room inside of our area, but also make sure that the zombies can't get to us as easy. And plus, it's always good to have plenty of room for the traps because the area that we're going to have the traps is going to be all right here, and we don't have to enclose this area unless we want to. It doesn't hurt to enclose it. I usually don't. I just usually leave it open because then it gives you an alternate firing, firing platform if you've got friends and stuff who want to come out and help. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to upgrade these. And then now here's the big key point for this week. Because we've got our nice little um, electric fence posts and trip wires, what we're going to do is we are going to change these blocks from blocks to arrow slits. And we're going to set them like this. And the arrow slits are really nice because eventually it's going to allow us to have dart traps behind them. And we can place the dart traps down and the dart traps are going to do additional damage to the zombies while they stand here and ineffectively ah see that's why i like using just the normal frames because if we'd done this with anything else that would be a bear to tear apart and this is why i was saying it's always good to just use wood frame but now that we've got these we're going to go ahead and upgrade all the way up to concrete so that way the zombies won't be able to attack this area here and get through because if we leave if we leave these at a lower HP, what the zombies will do is they'll try to smash these down and then come through the doors because there's going to be fewer HP between them and us. So it's always a good idea to make sure, like I said, the lowest HP area is directly to you. And I know it's boring to, to watch the upgrade process, but you get to see the XP flows pretty well you sit here and you do this so that's why my levels are so high for this week because of all the upgrades now you can get lucky and get just ridiculous xp from questing and stuff like that but also this is a really really big way to get xp so now that we've got that so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna come over here and i've already got some ladders down so we don't need the ladders but what we're going to do we don't need additional ladders i should say if you don't already have those ladders, you will require extra. And what we're going to do is right here, we're going to place those three ladders. And then we're going to place a hatch right there. There we go. And then we can go ahead and upgrade this hatch. There we go. I keep hitting the wrong buttons. I'm so sorry, folks. And then for here, we're going to take, we're going to place just like this wood frame blocks. Now the whole point of this is we're going to take those wood frame blocks and we're going to put these bars here. Oops, sorry, I'm on the wrong one. We're going to put the bars here. We're going to go ahead and fall down here because what we want is we want the bars to be on the outer edge as opposed to the inner edge. And the reason why is because if we double up like that, it makes sure that any birds or anything that attack are going to attack solely where the bars are as opposed to where the blocks and the bars are. Again, it's all about creating a path of least resistance for anything that's going to attack you. If I can get, there we go. No. Yeah, everything in this game acts just like water or electricity. Path of least resistance. That's how they're going to want to flow. Ooh, I don't know why I'm going inside. We need to go to this side over here. And we can actually place these blocks just like this. And then right here is going to be a doorway. That's how we want it to look. Go ahead and bounce over that. Come here, come inside. 
open that up. And just like we did before, we're going to fill it out like that. And then, roughly, yeah, it's about halfway. Halfway between the two, what we're going to do is we're going to create another little um, pillar area here. And this is going to seal in our fighting platform, but it's also going to give us an area to put these uh, bars down back here. So that way, again, we keep any birds or anybody who's going to attack us from this side focusing on the right area. Because it's too easy for them to attack another a weaker area which would cause catastrophic problems for us because we don't want zombies where we are. No zombies allowed. And it's easy just to, to it's easy to misplace these. So you always want to be careful how you've got them lined up. You see how it keeps bouncing around? That's why this is going to take a little bit longer for most people. And the good news is, is you can actually shoot through these bars. So when you're doing the horde, you'll be able to shoot any zombies that are coming up to you. And the bars always act as a good protection as well from spit from uh, cops and stuff like that later on. And bam. So that's all the bars. Except for on the top. That's the last place to have bars. Now, a lot of people that I've talked to before who have used a base design similar to this, they like to have their bars on the outside, on the top. I like to have them on the inside, on the top. Um, that's just me. I like to have them like this in case I want to put any defenses up there. They can sit flush with the uh, flush with the bars as opposed to that weird hover thing that happens. So we're gonna go ahead and place these here like, come on, so. And then we're gonna climb up here and then this is gonna give you coverage above from anything, but you can still shoot birds and stuff like that through here. And they're gonna replace our last hatch down right there. And then just to keep us be from being able to fall off, you don't have to do this. This is just my preference. I put bars here just for when you climb up, you don't fall off. You'll hit the bars and go, okay, cool, instead of walking forward. And you can always adjust how the hatch is down as well, but I usually never do. I just place it and then kind of forget about it, put some bars up there. But also, this is kind of neat too. So if you've got friends and stuff, if you've got somebody who's a little bit more adventurous and wants to get up here and fight from up top, they can always climb up here and this gives them you know, a little bit of protection from stuff, except for you know, birds that come down on top of them. So now all that's left, all that's left of this is adding in one more row of blocks here. And another row of blocks there. So that's it. That's all the upgrades we're doing for the week. Like I said, it's super easy. And you can even forego this second path of uh, blocks here if you want to, if you don't have the additional um, electric fence posts or um, um, tripwire posts. If you've only got, instead of having uh, four sets, if you've only got two, you can forego that, but because we have four, we're going to leave them here. And then I will bring you guys back once everything is upgraded. Okay, folks, I should point out I accidentally placed the doors on this side in the wrong position, so I had to tear them up. Instead of them being on the outer edge, we need them on the inner edge like this because we're going to remove this block here. And if you've got a little bit more room in between, it doesn't affect it as much when you have... I put that back down. It doesn't affect it as much when you have, um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hit tab there. When you have your um, tripwire and electric fence posts, you've actually got a little bit more room to play. So it's a little bit better overall if you've got it set up that way. 
if you've got the doors you know closer together on the inner edge as opposed to the outer edge but now we're going to finish upgrading and i'll bring you guys back okay folks so i made one small miscalculation um i forgot we were actually going to need six doors not four so um yeah once you've got everything created, uh, you're going to need six doors because we're going to place down two doors here. So we've got four doors down there and then two doors up here. And you can actually create a, um, a um, airlock here as well, which just adds even extra protection to verify, or not to verify, to, <laughs> I said verify, to make sure the zombies come this way as opposed to any other way. If you put two doors here and create another hatch here, another little airlock, it will super 100% guarantee the zombies are going to come to this path right here because they're not going to be able to go anywhere else. The the HP blocking them is going to be super duper high. But that's it. That's how everything is going to look upgraded. We're going to climb up here. We've got our nifty little, all of our little stuff here. Little area to shoot birds and stuff. Shoot people out there. We've got this path here. Now, I left a block out here and then again on the other side for a very good reason so when you're putting down your stuff depending upon how you've got these um, stuff set up you can actually have a tripwire here and it won't affect when you walk through here but if you put down your electric fence post and you try to walk through that door you're going to get electrocuted so i like having the electric fence post right there and then having my tripwire back here so you can still go through the door. Of course, you're going to have to crouch a little bit. But it allows you to go through the door. You don't have to worry about uh, shocking yourself on the electric fence post because the electric fence post is in front of said tripwire. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do the same here. And you can always expand the base out farther. I don't do that. I usually leave it like this. But we're going to put another tripwire there. And if I can get the... Okay, be a butt. See if I care. Hey. Ah, it's going to be a butt. Hey. Yeah. Just like that. We're going to put this other one right here. Just like that. And then we're going to put the tripwire post for it right there. Now all that's left is to place the battery bank. Oh, and also... So if, you, if you're lucky and you have the um, turrets, what you can go ahead and do, a uh, sledge turret or a junk turret, what you can do is you can go ahead and put some blocks here like this. And this creates another little frame. Eventually, this will be an upgrade path anyway for the base, is to have blocks here to make sure the zombies keep funneling in this way. I put them there for now anyway, just be, because I've got these two. Hey, come on, get off my hand. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and upgrade these to cobblestone. And then we're going to put down turrets on either side. Oh, crap. Uh, ha, I went too far with it. That was unintentional. I got lost in the uh, upgrade sauce, apparently. But what these, are, what these uh, sludge turrets are going to do is they're going to cause zombies that come up here. It's going to hit them, and they're going to take damage and fall off and then circle back around and come back up. And the turrets will be there for us to collect at the end. But it'll give some nice extra damage to zombies and then also make sure we aren't being completely swarmed. And then also, if you don't have to put them up there if you don't want to. I like doing it. You can, If you're afraid or don't have the resources to upgrade everything correctly, you can put them like this. I'm not. I'm going to place them... I'm going to place one... Hey, just like that. And then I'm going to re or I'm going to place this one. Come on. Just like that. And see how the other one is down? Now if this one breaks or something happens, this one will take over and start firing. And you can actually just pick one up. We'll pick up both. And we'll save to put these down when the actual horde is going to happen. Because right now, I'm going to show you guys... Oop, accidentally created another door. But right now, I'm going to show you guys where to place and how to wire our traps. And always get into the habit of closing a door behind you when you're done because you don't want the zombies to, to come in and um, 
tickle you. Yeah, we'll we'll say tickle. That's what they'll do. They'll they'll come in and they'll tickle you. They're zombies are known tickle monsters. So there's a lot of different ways on how you can do this. I always just usually push put it, you know, somewhere like that where I'm sitting here and just go, oh, hey, okay, you know, I can turn it on and fight and whatever you need to do. Or you can put switches and stuff. I usually never use them. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna go from battery bank to tripwire. Battery bank to tripwire. And then this is the fun part. You're gonna go from tripwire, we're gonna start with the back one, all the way over here. Now see how the line is black? That's because the size of the base is smaller than 14 blocks. So we don't ever have to worry about not having room to be able to turn this on. That's the cool part about a design like this. Sometimes bases are too big and the wire turns red and you can't connect everything. This allows you to easily move around and connect everything. So now that we've got the trip wires together, we're gonna go from trip wire to um, uh, electric fence post, trip wire, electric fence post. And then we're gonna go from outside electric fence post to outside electric fence post. And then the same thing here. And then back across. Now, if I remember correctly, I could be wrong. Vidui42 has a really good video about electricity and how it works. But if I remember correctly, the side that takes damage is the termination side, which will be this side. I might be wrong, and it could be the source side, which will be over there. But I'm pretty sure it's here that these two sides will be the ones that take the damage. I could be wrong. If this were like normal electronics, it would definitely be this side because that would be what's considered the ground. And that's typically what is going to cause a problem is a floating ground when you work on electronics. I work on electronics, so that's how I know. But now we're gonna go ahead and test these real quick. Um, we're gonna turn this on and then we can just come over here. See how the, the that, that sound, that's the trip wires. We're gonna come over here and run up. This is going to electrocute us. Ah, it shocked the poop out of us. But see, there it goes. That's it working. And that's taking a whole bunch of damage. But that's what we wanted. We wanted it to... Yes, I was right. That's the side that takes damage is the termination side, not the uh, the source side. So, yay, I was right. But you saw what it requires to repair it is it takes, takes uh, forged iron and um, electrical parts. We don't have any electrical parts on us so we can't repair it right now but we do don't we have oh no i didn't pick up the forged iron but that's why you needed the forged iron is for repairs of the um trip wires so now that we've got that we've got power we've got everything we need for the horde night so i will see you guys back at horde time Alrighty, folks here we go so horde night is here it's about to start soon but i want to show you guys so i went ahead and i expanded this out uh by an extra block because eventually what we're going to do is we are going to place a blade trap there and over there so as the zombies come up they are going to take uh blade traps to the face and i expect the blade traps will probably break really easily but now we have a little bit better placement for our um for our turrets there so that's that's what you want and then I also got really lucky and I was able to buy a whole bunch of concrete from the traders. So I was able to upgrade these outer blocks and create a little bit of extra room for ourselves down there by knocking out some of the blocks that were in the way. Holy crap. Did that dog just get punted? That scared the poop out of me so I jerked away and missed it. <laughs> oh man, those uh, turrets are worth it. Or sledge. Robotic sledges. <laughs> hey, come on, doggy. Come on, doggy. There we go. Piao. Man, those sledges are so worth it if you can find one. They're just... They're just the best. Hi, lady. Oh, we haven't even turned on our uh, battery bank yet. There we go. Look at that. Oh, 
let them take some damage. You know what, we're gonna check and make sure that everything is repaired. That's why I love those traps like that. And then we can just sit here and attack as we need to. Shoot her in the face. Probably not the first time she's had that happen to her. <laughs> That's a dirty joke. I shouldn't make jokes like that. Especially not in an informational video like this. Thought it was a lady over there attacking. I had to make sure. All right. So this is how easy it is, folks. This is why this is such a good horde base design. Now, you can always make them longer and add more traps and stuff like that, but you know, it's more resources. This takes a decent bit of resources to get everything up to like reinforce steel and stuff like that, but as a beginner base, this is really great. Because you can honestly forego upgrading anything to concrete and leave it at um, flagstone or stone or whatever it's called. And you're good. You've got, you know, a decent horde base that's going to handle the horde knight. It's going to be, you know, fairly resource um, efficient with just cobblestone or flagstone or whatever it's called. Because you're going to have plenty of experience and stuff rolling in from killing these zombies just like this. And like I showed you, it... It lasts really well, that first Horde Knight. I mean, it it did phenomenal. And even right now, it's doing really good. The traps are doing what they're supposed to be. They're keeping us from being swarmed. The turrets out there are smacking the crap out of some zombies like they're supposed to be. And that's what you want. guy's a little too far away, but that's okay. God, that is so fun. And if you've got a good gun, you can just sit here and forego melee at all and just just shooty shoot, shoot, shoot. And you see they're taking pretty good damage. Ah, too many dog bodies on the way. But since we do have a knife, what we can do is we can sit here and harvest these dog bodies and get more bones, leather, and meat, and fat, and stuff like that. So it's going to help us a lot with gathering resources that are otherwise kind of a pain in the butt to gather. And then, you know, we just sit here and come back to smack a lady in the face. Give her some wood. See? It's easy as this. Those traps really help out a ton. That's why I always push. If you can, those are some of the things you need to buy first from a trader. Is any, um, any electric fence wires or fence posts and the... Uh, The um, tripwires. I was having a hard time remembering what that was called. I don't know why. That was weird. Oh, hey, look. They pushed the loot through for us. Thank you. Thank you, kind sir. Okay, we need to repair that a little bit. And you see, I'm just using a pistol. I haven't even used the shotgun or the AK. That's how good the base is. You don't have to bust out the heavier weapons until much later. But it's always good to have it now. You can just sit here and Shoot like this. And 
now we're gonna come out here real quick and take a look at our traps make sure everything is repaired Oop. did not mean to do that Oh, crap. I did not mean to upgrade that. I meant to save that for repairing those as they take damage. Damn it. I upgraded it again and I didn't mean to. I was looking at their HP, not trying to upgrade them. All right. I think that's the horde. I think that's it. You see, it's just super duper easy to survive in this base. And we have a nice place to live. We've got, I like putting my, my storage in the floor near the workbenches. Not everybody does, but it's a personal preference. But we've got plenty of storage. We've got livable area and we can always expand. The reason I don't always cover this out completely, but we will kind of expand more here and block it off a little bit is because I, I like saving this. If you're playing with multiple people, I like saving this and letting this be like a group area. So each person can kind of have their own stuff their own little area and then that be the horde area but that's it look super duper easy and that is week two we will be back for week three thanks for sticking around folks i hope you had fun make sure you like subscribe drop a comment down below let me know what you think have fun take it easy we'll see you next time <laughs>